Hello everyone, Brian from Witch Doctor here. Uh, this test was done to see if weight sorting brass had any impact on precision. And so what I did is I took brand new pieces of Norma 6 PPC brass. This is a brass that I use more often than not for 6 PPC. Uh, several brand new cases right out of the box. Uh, first thing I had to do was turn the necks because I had a 262 chamber for the test uh, rifle. Turned them to about uh, eight and a half thousandths of an inch. Um, and then went ahead and trimmed the, the, uh, the neck here to uniformity. Um, so basically at that point had uniform neck thickness and then um, made sure that the overall length of the case was the same for all cases. Um, basically after that went ahead and um, weight sorted them and I came up with three sort of clusters of weights. I came up with a light weight and they were sorted by grains and the light weight was 103.8 grain to 104.1 grain. The average, which represented, you know, the vast majority of the pieces of brass, um, I took the, the average of those and that was at 104.9 grain. And then the heavier brass was at 105.4 to 105.7 grains. So I basically took five pieces of brass from each of those three conditions and sorted them um, and made sure that I kept them separate from each other. Um, I also used a, a and tracked exactly which pieces of brass were what. Um, I, I put in a row in my loading block. One row was the same five pieces, the next row was the same five pieces, and then the next row was the same five pieces. So I made sure to tightly control exactly where those pieces were in the loading block. Also did a blind procedure where um, I had someone else code uh, which ones were the light, average, and heavy and then put them in the loading block and I didn't know which ones were light, average, or heavy. Um, <clears throat> and then what I did is um, loaded them all up with the exact same load. It's a load that's been shooting pretty good for this rifle um, using LT32 powder and uh, Honestine, um, I think they're 65 or 66 grain bullets, really good bullet. Um, seated them exactly the same. Pretty much everything was the same with the load, right down to the depth of the primer um, and the primer type. Um, and went to the range. And um, one other thing that I did um, was I took... Uh, a piece of brass from each of the conditions and I stuck it in the amp annealer to see if the changes in the weight would equate to a different amp code and I actually found that uh, for the 104 grain piece of brass the code was 126 for the 104.9 grain piece of brass it was also 126 but for a 105.4 grain piece of brass it was 127 so for whatever reason, the amp machine, you know, kind of told me that, well, these heavier ones must have a little more mass, probably somewhere in the shoulder or something, um, where it anneals uh, compared to the um, light and the average weight brass. Um, anyway, so I went out to the range and shot seven five-shot groups with each light, average, and heavy. So several several five shot groups on target um, didn't know exactly which conditions I was shooting in um, I didn't know where the light average or heavy were in the loading block that was someone else coded those for me um, shot them all and then um, the data showed that the velocity was the same statistically. Um, running a statistical test on the velocity data showed that uh, they're pretty much the same velocity. There was enough variability 
in the velocity where we couldn't make out that there was any difference in velocity between the light average and heavy group groups. Um, the group data was was very interesting because in the the light brass condition, the aggregate for the seven five shot groups was 0 0.361, 0 0.3613. For the average, the aggregate was 0 0.2383. Uh, and for heavy, it was 0 0.2799. So those aggregates were definitely, you know, just face value. They looked very different. Um, and so what I ended up doing was uh, a statistical test called an analysis of variance. It's a test that you can use if you have um, interval type data like this or continuous data like this, but you have more than two conditions. If you only have two conditions, you can run a t-test. If you have more than two conditions, um, the analysis of variance or what we call ANOVA is the t statistical test that you would use. And what we found when I ran that test was that um, this test basically just tells me is there any difference among these three conditions. It doesn't tell me exactly where the differences are, but it tells me is there any difference among them. And it turns out there was. Um, and basically this p-value, the probability value of there being a difference among these three conditions was 0 0.0137 which um, in statistic terms means it's it's a real there's some real difference here uh, statistically and what I had to do was then run what's called a Tukey's least significant different test this is the test that then tells me out of my three conditions you know where where was the difference here or where were their differences if there's more than one and what it told me was that there was definitely a difference between the light brass and the average weight brass. And so if you look at the numbers, that makes sense. You got 0.3613 ag, uh, and you compare that to a 0.283 ag. Um, that's a pretty significant, that's like 0.13 or so difference. Um, pretty big difference uh, in, in a... Uh, a short range bench rest match that's the difference between placing in the top five or the pretty much placing last so um definitely the two keys test told me that yes there's a difference between light and average average performed much better than light um light versus heavy 0 0.3613 0 0.2799 there was not a statistically significant difference. The threshold for that test in terms of the probability is 0 0.05. Um, the probability I got in the test was 0 0.089. So it was ex very close to being significant. And if you know, you know a lot about these kind of statistics, what that tells me is that, you know, it came close and you know, if I probably would have shot this test maybe one or two more times, um, a real difference, you know, could could arise um, in light versus heavy. But since I only shot the test seven times, um, the stats were not able to detect the any real difference. So anyway, um, definitely light compared to average was a huge difference. Um, light compared to heavy was kind of almost there, probably if I would have shot this test two more times it would be there um, comparing average to heavy again the probability value was 0.135 it didn't meet the 0 0.05 threshold so um, so definitely you know light versus average was a difference if you're shooting the lighter brass in this type of test um, it's not performing well Certainly, if you look at the raw data on the graph, you can you can certainly tell that. You can see here the blue line is the light, you know, uh, data in terms of the grouping. So for the first test, you know, pretty big group. Second test, it grouped okay, but still at 0.3. And then the rest of the tests, you know, um, from three to six, not so good. But then seven shot pretty good. So we I was able to get one small group out of the seven. 
uh, with the light. And then you move on to average, which is this orange, and you can see the stability in the group size. You know, it's shooting in, you know, usually in the low twos. So there was pretty stable uh, group sizes there with the average weight brass. And then you get the heavy weight brass and a little less stable. Um, and, you know, overall group sizes were a little bit larger. Um, so that's the uh, group data there. Oh, and also, um, if you're wondering, you know, well, if you shot this brass first, this brass second, maybe your barrel was warm and whatnot. But what I ended up doing was what's called the order of effects test, where I fired um, this condition first, this condition second, this condition third, and then I went to the, you know, and fired this condition first, second, third, and just varied the order of effects so that there was no way that uh either you know a warm barrel or whatever uh played any any impact on this um also i cleaned my barrels in between each test so literally after shooting you know a few fowlers and then the the 15 shots on record um i cleaned the barrel out pretty good um so you know barrel uh, uh dirtiness or whatnot doesn't really play a role either um anyway and then one other interesting thing that I found I I looked at the groups and just kind of the way that they're shaped and I was like man there's some interesting stuff here I'm you know in some of these conditions I'm getting a you know a flyer fairly consistently again this was the exact same powder powder weight exact same bullet primer everything there was um, everything was the same except for the weight of the brass um, and so I decided to go ahead and do a group shape analysis, um, and I created codes. You know, I created a, a circle-shaped group code, horizontal, vertical, um, and then a flyer code. And I coded them and found that in the light group, you know, in my first test, I got a flyer. Second and third were horizontal. <laughs> Fourth and fifth were vertical. Six was horizontal, and then finally that one good group was a circle. Um, for the average, um, I had a good circle group to start. I did have a flyer on the second, and then the rest were perfect circles. Again, shooting usually here in, in the low twos, and the circular shape predominated. Um, with the heavy brass, I got a circle, a flyer, circle, flyer, circle, horizontal, horizontal. So. Um, interestingly enough, um, there seem to be more flyers with the heavy brass. Um, and what I did is I then tabulated a percentage of, you know, what percent of the brass weight conditions, you know, produced a circle. Because we, you know, we want a nice circle group. And with the light brass, only 14.3% of the groups were a circle. With the average... Uh, weight brass, 85.7% of the groups, all but one, uh, were circle. And then with the heavy brass, 42.9% were circle. So I thought that was quite interesting. So in addition to the actual group size itself being, you know, sort of the best in the average weight condition, the actual shape of the groups were statistically significantly better in the average um, condition. So I, I ran uh, what's called a Kruskal Wallace statistical test um, where you can test um, what's called non parametric data. I'm sorry if I'm geeking out on you with all this statistical stuff, but um, it's basically a test that can test. Um, data that is not like interval or ratio uh, in nature. It, it can test categorical data like yeses or nos or what percent of this versus not a percent of that. And that statistical test came up with a probability value of 0 0.037, which basically told me that um, the average weight brass um, was more likely than the heavy and light to have a circular pattern um, to the group shape. So overall, um, it looks like, you know, the brass, if it's sorted and you take kind of the average, kind of the middle of that distribution 
of weighted brass, um, you're probably going to do better. Um, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not sure if this test is going to generalize to every cartridge or every brass type or, or whatnot, but, um, you know, it seems to me that at least for this brass <laughs> in this test, the average weighted brass performed better, you know, in terms of, um, group size and then group shape. Um, one other thing that I also did was I used the amp press, um, for one of the, you know, um, tests to see, did I get any differences in seating pressure, um, among the brass types. And, um, it looks like the light in the average brass had pretty much overlapping seating pressure. So the light brass is the orange color and then the average brass is the lime green. They're all kind of in there together. So they seem to have had a very similar um, sort of ultimate seating pressure uh, terminal force uh, metric. Did get some interesting pressures here where it looks like the initial seating kind of spiked and then there was a slight lull you know, as it was getting seated down and then as it seated completely, a steady rise in pressure. Um, the heavy brass, there was these two sort of outliers in terms of seating pressure. So for whatever reason, um, two out of the five uh, seating forces for the heavy brass looked kind of outside of the normal distribution, or at least definitely this one is outside of kind of the normal distribution of the pattern for the heavy brass and also the light and average brass. Um, <clears throat> also noting too that, you know, when I did this test, I really wanted to simulate more of a short range bench rest uh, match scenario where I don't really have a whole lot of time to reload. And um, basically what I did is um, I did not use the lubrication inside the necks. Um, I certainly do that for any preloading that I do at many of the score matches that I do or the, you know, long range shooting that I do where I preload. Um, certainly use the Neolube 2 uh, lube for the inside of the case next, but for this I didn't do that. So um, what you see in terms of ultimate seating pressure, um, pretty high levels. If I would have used the lube, you'd see it down here in like the 30 to 20 range. You'd see a kind of a a lower seating pressure curve because that lubrication really um, makes the seating uh, a lot easier in terms of pressure. So um, didn't use that for this test. I just simulated kind of how I would you know be shooting this during a, a match, a short range bench rest match where um, I don't have a whole lot of time to reload. So I, I I can't do every single step in the reloading process that I would ideally like to do. Um, which would include um, lubricating the inside of the case neck. So anyway, there you go. Um, you know, I was a little surprised with the data um, after, you know, I got the coding sheet and inputted the data into the Excel spreadsheet and then started analyzing it and then realizing that, wow, um, I guess, you know, sorting brass is, you know, probably a good idea. Um, and it seems like definitely the lighter brass for whatever reason just isn't, isn't cutting it. Um, and so, you know, I do recommend considering, you know, weight sorting your brass and based on this test, if you believe that it generalizes to your application, probably best to, you know, take the light brass and use it for something else. Use it for fowler shots or, or whatever, uh, plinking, I don't know. Um, and then definitely, you know, shoot the average ones if you're really looking for, uh, you know, um, improved precision, better precision, whatnot. All right, so that's the test. Um, again, pretty pretty surprising that both, you know, group data for the average weighted brass looked really good, much better than, than the light brass. And then the group shapes for the average weighted brass were significantly better than the light and the heavy. Um, like a six times out of seven, it was a, a, almost a perfect little circle. Um, whereas um, with light, we had a lot of horizontal and verticals. And then with heavy, you know, we had a, a couple of flyers. Um, so there you go, everyone, please like subscribe and share 
And also, please check out my Patreon account. Uh, these tests are, are, you know, getting pretty expensive. And, and if you can help support uh, the cause with some financial, um, you know, contribution, that would be greatly appreciated uh, so that I can continue to do as many of these tests as possible. All right, everyone. Take care.